One of the strongest fundamental themes of this Pisces new moon for all signs is about listening to, fostering, and acting upon your intuition. You might have noticed that there's been this growing energy around things like change, evolution, revolution, and with Uranus, the planet of change and chaos, playing such a potent role during this new moon, aligning with our intuition to cut through distraction and get to the heart of this inner knowing will be one of the most powerful tools to access during this time. Now, new moons are all about new beginnings, rest, reflection, and planting seeds for the future from a more balanced space of clarity. And this clarity is heightened and really comes from when the sun and moon come together in the same sign as they're doing now, allowing for deeper clarity and a more balanced understanding of things. So have you been feeling any inner callings to deepen your spiritual practice? Maybe you've noticed others or your own intuitive abilities and synchronicities coming to the forefront of your awareness more clearly. Either way, this Pisces new moon will be creating very fertile soil for things like intention setting and documenting the clarity that arises at this time as we step into a new chapter, a new opportunity, and a new lunar cycle. Hello, hello friends, it's your girl Alina, and in this video we'll be diving into the five things you need to know all about this upcoming March 10th new moon happening at 20 degrees in the water sign of Pisces. We'll dive into the nature of a new moon in this specific sign, what it means for all zodiac signs, ways to align with this energy, and of course at the end I'll offer some custom journal prompts so we can really reflect and just, I don't know, align together. And as always, if you'd like an outline of this and future astrology forecast videos automatically emailed to you, then be sure to sign up for my astrology newsletter in the description box below. Now each lunation and astrological event really impacts us very differently. So I always suggest that you find out what house this new moon will be transiting in your personal charts for a more accurate prediction of what specific areas in your life will be most influenced at this time. So I'll start by showing you each sign and the corresponding house that this moon will be transiting through. And I always suggest to check for your rising sign so you can pause to read. And I also am excited to remind you once again that I am officially hosting the very first annual Oraline Retreat in Thailand this June, and you are invited. We'll have a week of astrology workshops, beach morning meditations, journaling, group snorkeling, hiking, ocean kayaking, uh, we'll be island hopping, taking Thai cooking classes, all packed into a week together. And I wanted to mention that for added financial accessibility, we're offering payment installment options, but the ability to have payment installment options ends March 24th of this month. And there are only three more early bird discounted spots. So if you have any questions at all, be sure to check out the link in my description box or on the screen and feel free to email me directly. This is truly the trip of a lifetime that we get to do together. I'm just so excited to form these core memories together during this very intentionally curious curated week that we will have in Thailand. Eee! But with that said, let's dive more into the video. So as many of y'all know, new moons mark the beginning of a new lunar cycle and the moon directly impacts our emotions, our intuitive abilities, our relationships. New moons are also seen as a potent time for planting seeds of intentions, whether that be intentions for the new lunar cycle ahead, new season or month. As we see it here in the Northern Hemisphere, winter is coming to a close. So this new moon can also be a potent time for reflecting upon how far we've come. This new moon is actually the last major lunation of the winter season for us here in the Northern Hemisphere. And by the time that we are even midway through this lunar cycle, we will have already started the spring. So now can be a great time for reflecting on the winter season, getting a kickstart on that before the equinox that we see happening on the 19th of this month, and really reflecting on what happened during this winter season? What are maybe some lessons that we've learned? How far have we come? And are there any clear intentions that we might want to start exploring, maybe plant the seeds for now, leading up to the zodiac new year, the astrological new year 
on the spring equinox when the sun enters a sign of Aries, the very first sign of the zodiac. And I find it very fascinating that it is in Pisces, you know, it's the last sign of the zodiac as well. So we have this time to really sit in the themes of Pisces and dive deeper into that, which we'll talk about. And for even further context as to why there are these themes of newness around a new moon, all new moons occur when we see that the sun forms a conjunction with the moon in the same sign. So for this new moon, we're seeing that they're uniting in the sign of Pisces. Now the power of the sun and moon coming together in the same sign is that it tends to bring a lot more balance between our inner and our outer worlds. Now the power of the sun coming together with the moon in conjunction in the same sign is that it tends to allow for us to bring our inner and outer world together in a lot of different ways. There can tend to feel like there's less of a disconnect between usually what the outer world wants and what the inner world wants and being able to to find a balance at this time. This is one of the reasons why actually people who have sun and moon in the same signs can often tend to feel a bit more sure of themselves and be a little bit more grounded in who they are. Um, and it's because they have the sun and moon together. And this is one of the many reasons why you see people doing new moon rituals, where they set aside some time to get present, reflect on the previous lunar cycle, and set intentions for the one ahead. Now, when I say that, I don't necessarily mean being in action, kickstarting, you know, a new intention or anything like that. And I also don't mean that you necessarily have to have a brand new goal every single lunation. More so is that it presents a potent opportunity. So if you are feeling called to start something new or reflect, then now can be a powerful time to do that energetically. And there's a lot of energetic support for you in those spaces. This is one of the reasons why in the Orline Astrology Planners, which is my creation, there are dedicated new and full moon ritual pages within them, custom for each sign with different writing prompts and spaces for you to write new writing prompts like ones that I offer in these videos. New moons in general tend to bring a focus to things like the home, our feelings, our emotions, and close relationships. And this transit is favorable because of the emotional balance that it can bring, this transit between the sun and moon. Now, when we specifically see a new moon in the sign of Pisces, there can be a lot more energy and emphasis around being more in touch with our emotions, our spirituality, and our creativity. Now, this is because Pisces is a water sign, which is associated with our emotions, sensitivity, and our spirituality. It's also ruled by Neptune, the planet of dreams and imagination. Now, if you've been seeking a time to connect with your inner self, your inner voice, to meditate or engage in creative pursuits, then this Pisces new moon can definitely provide a very supportive environment for these endeavors. Now, this can also be a good time to tap into your intuition and let your imagination flow freely, whether that be for a creative endeavor or for visualizing your future. Pisces is also very strongly associated with things like empathy, compassion, and intuition, which means that this new moon can be a great time for focusing on our relationships and cultivating a deeper understanding and connection with those that you care about. Out. Next up, let's talk top transits that are happening at the time of this lunation. One of them that I want to talk about first has all to do with Neptune and how it's forming a conjunction with the Sun, Moon, and Mercury. Now, all three of these transits are not necessarily in the most strongest degree at the time of this new moon, but because they involve Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces, it makes Neptune the depositor of this lunation and it makes whatever transit that it will be in more influential in our lives at this time. So first up, when we see Neptune conjunct the sun, it can tend to open us up to new, evolved, or more inspiring spiritual perspectives and inner callings. Now this can potentially challenge your personal self image that you might have built over time. And this is because deeper spiritual practice can tend to dissolve the ego. And the ego is most strongly influenced by the sun. And so this transit could result in some feelings of potential confusion, that you might feel the sense of a disillusionment of previous understandings or what things that you thought you were supposed to do. Next up, when we see Neptune conjuncting the moon, that can bring about a deeper level of self-awareness and empathy with our walls that we might have built up over time for protection falling down or thinning a bit. 
really allowing us to intuitively sense and connect with one another on a deeper level. So be sure to use discernment with who you choose to share and exchange your energy with, especially around the time of this lunation, as we will definitely be able to sense and potentially even take on some of that energy a lot more easily. And with the more active imagination coming about thanks to Neptune at this time, there can be a higher potential for delusion, paranoia, and a potential pull for distractions or self-soothing actions that can potentially be destructive, like things like addiction or consumption disorders. So really be sure to stay cognizant of these potentials. And the reason why this can come about as well is because it can be a lot easier for us to tap into our emotions, into our memories, especially when we're sharing energy with one another. There can also be a higher potential of us also tapping into uncomfy feelings, uncomfy memories, triggering experiences. And so it's important to stay cognizant of that, that on one side of the coin, this can be a very beautiful time for deeper connection with one another, deeper uh, feelings of love. We can give and share our energy in a very easier flowing way with our feeling like our walls are down a bit. It feels like almost like the veil is a bit thinner as well, spiritually in a lot of ways. Um, boundaries, all of these things can kind of fall down a little bit, allowing us to also more easily imagine things. And these, you know, this can be utilized in a very powerful way. On the flip side of that, um, because there, there's less of those sort of barriers up on a spiritual and emotional level, um, we might be experiencing some negative emotions or some tough ones. And so that can tend to make it a lot easier for us to lean deeper into escapism in a lot of ways because we don't want to feel those things. So if you wanna be open to this and you want to utilize this in a powerful way for deeper connection, for diving into your emotions, diving into your intuition, testing it, practicing it, practicing your psychic abilities even, you know, dream journaling, tapping into a lot of these intuitive abilities in a lot of ways now is a powerful potent time for that but on the flip side it can be important to also stay cognizant of you know if you don't feel comfortable going up in the clouds keeping your feet on the ground and doing things at your own pace that make you feel comfortable as well as practicing discernment around who you spend your time with and the type of boundaries that you might need to implement in order to, you know, protect your energy if need be. You know what I find so interesting that's not talked enough about in spirituality is that oftentimes it's when we empathize with, support, and share our psychic downloads and our love with others, whether that be through volunteering or supporting our loved ones that can often be such a potent antidote for the things that we often suffer in isolation with. It's through these deeper connections that these transits often facilitate us feeling less alone and strengthening our collective connections with humanity and ourselves. And finally, on top of Neptune conjuncting with the sun and the moon, we also see that it will be conjuncting with Mercury, the planet of information exchange, thinking, and communication. Man, it is so crazy to see so many signs in Pisces and Neptune having these connections. It's truly wild. It's really interesting because when it comes together with um, Mercury, we often see a lot more accurate psychic perceptions, predictions, downloads, and synchronicities. And they're usually a lot more just acute, accurate, right in your face, thanks to Mercury really bringing in that cerebral aspect of things to our experiences. So overall, when we're looking at all of these Neptune conjunctions in relation, in context to this Pisces new moon, this moon, the, the moon already impacts our emotions, our connections, our intuitive abilities, but it's in Pisces, this sign that is all about spirituality, imagination, and intuition. Seeing that at the same time of this new moon, Neptune is having all these interesting transits with the sun, moon, so our ego, our outer world, our inner world, and then our mental capacities, these astral bodies that impact these areas, it will be such a potent time for tapping into your intuition, such a potent time for sharing space with those that understand these things, especially in a spiritual sense. With these transits alone, it sets the stage for a very potent new moon when it comes to intention setting around our spiritual practices and our spiritual studies. So honing these skills, tapping into and learning about the wisdom of the thousands of years of people who have come before us. Those can be great sort of guidelines and offer a powerful path if we're looking for one. We have very fertile soil right now for 
a lot of um, divination practices as well, working with the energy around us, with the elements. So yeah. <laughs> Next up, if you've been feeling an inner calling for change that might have been building over time, then both the sun and moon sextiling Uranus at the time of this new moon might be a catalyst to the change that you're seeking. Now, this is because when we see the sun and moon, these two astral bodies that strongly impact our outer world, our ego, and our inner world, having such a easy flowing transit with Uranus, the planet of change, evolution, potential chaos and originality, these transits can tend to bring about chance encounters and experiences that can spark an inner calling to kind of shake things up, likely in our home and our personal life. Now this can also show up in our spiritual practices, but really in alignment with things like spring cleaning, or it can also show up in our financial lives. And this is because we see that the sun and moon will be in Pisces and Uranus will be in the sign of Taurus. Either way, overall, this transit creates a very potent window of time that energetically supports us putting our inner callings for changes and taking it and turning it into constructive action if we choose to actually act upon these inklings that we might be feeling right now. Next up, really adding to this inner drive for change that we might be feeling will be Mars squaring with Uranus, also at the time of this new moon. Now, despite this being a squared aspect, which is usually associated with more of a negative connotation, this can be the type of transit that can also sort of fan the flames within us for things like rebellion, highlighting for us where we might be feeling any sort of restraints or too much control over our lives and really energizing us to push for things like freedom to exist as we are and experience personal and creative breakthroughs as a result. Now, this is partly because we have Mars, the planet of force, aggression, action, and energy experiencing this sort of friction inducing aspect with Uranus, again, the planet of revolution and change. And while on one hand, this friction can create a spark that we might need for change, almost acting as this inspiration to be in action. On the other side of the coin, it could also manifest as us being a little bit more reactionary or defensive before we truly process what it is that we're experiencing or what it is people are saying. Now, people often say that anger is tied to a deeper rooted pain, which sparks this emotion. So remembering to pause and process before reacting can make a world of a difference as we ride these very potent Uranus waves <laughs> uh, during these transits at the time of this new moon. Now, by the way, if any of this video has resonated with you so far, please be sure to hit the like button because it tells the YouTube algorithm that not only you like content like this, but it helps to show more people my videos, which is the number one way to support my work. So I appreciate it in advance. Now, when it comes to new moon rituals and actions, things that we can do in alignment with these transits, you know, I feel like I've pretty clearly laid a lot of that out, but specifically when it comes to a Pisces new moon, when we see that cosmically there is this opportunity, this sort of window where there's a lot of energy supporting any intentions and seeds, so to speak, that we set at this time, really reflecting on our emotional health, our emotional wellness. Like what does it look like for us to allow our emotions, our intuitive abilities to flow through? What in the past might have hindered those things or caused us to second guess ourselves to the point that now we're trying to relearn a lot of these things. I was just having a conversation with a friend about how I feel like a lot of what strengthening, tapping into, listening to, and acting upon our intuition is, is really us unlearning a lot of things. I truly believe that when we're born, we understand our intuition so clearly. That's the reason why children don't have a filter, right? That's the reason why as soon as you feel something as a baby, you cry. It's on a survival type level that we listen to our intuition and the messaging from our body. We listen to what we observe and we speak that truth. Um, and I feel like over time, we were taught in so many different ways to filter ourselves, change ourselves and kind of fit our very amalgamous like I don't know how to say it but are very malleable and ever-changing almost you know sort of like gas mist like being fitting it into a box for society 
I feel like when that happens, we tend to shut off a lot of those things. We also tend to shut off a lot of those things when we bring things up with people who aren't honest with themselves or with you. So for example, if when you were younger or in relationships, you might have said like, hey, you know, I noticed that I have this feeling about this thing between us or about you, like what's going on and they shut it down. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about and they're in denial, so then they deny you. Oftentimes we can tend to then question ourselves and our own intuition. Um, and so my point is, is that what I feel called to share with you for this new moon, something to really explore is what has our relationship with our intuition been like? And what are the things from the past that might've influenced our our ability or our muscle that we have when it comes to like our muscle reflex to actually respond to and act upon our intuition. Um, another thing that I think can be very potent right now is setting intentions around a spiritual practice. Historically, in every culture around the world, there was some form of structure, consistency, routine, and ritual around spiritual practices and that happened for a reason just like when you work out after a long time you build muscle so too can we build muscles in our routine and our connection to the divine to our inner voice and to all that is so those are the things that come to mind for ways to align with this and things to focus on in terms of reflection and intention setting at this time. All right, next up, let's talk about these writing prompts, these custom new moon journal prompts. So what I will do is I will read out the prompts to you here. If you have your R-Line Astrology Planner, you're welcome to take it out and flip over to the dedicated new moon ritual section where you can write these things out. And when you see them on the screen, you're welcome to pause the video, write them out, unpause, and I will see you at the end. <laughs> How would you describe your relationship with spiritual practices and studies? Are there any specific areas within these spaces that have called to you more recently or more than others? In what ways can you visualize yourself more naturally being the change that you would like to see in the world? And finally, for this new lunar cycle, do you have any new or existing intentions that you would like to set at this time? Oh, and before I end this, I wanted to mention that I will be doing a spring equinox live stream where it will be an equinox workshop and live meditation happening on Sunday, March 17th, two days before the actual equinox, which will be on a Tuesday. Um, so if you want to just partake in and if you've been like, man, these equinoxes happen and these um, solstices happen, but like, what do I do, you know, and you want to come together for free, then be sure to look out for that. Turn on your video notifications. And what's cool about this live stream is that not only will it be a guided equinox meditation, but it will be a workshop. So we will be talking about and reflecting together on the previous season and look to the season ahead. And especially if you have your online astrology planner, you don't have to have it. But if you do, you know that we have seasonal reflection sections for looking at the previous winter season and setting intentions for the spring ahead. So we'll be able to fill that out together. But even if you don't have that, you can come. And a lot of this workshop will be structured in the same way that the workshops on the Thailand retreat will be. So whether or not you're coming, that's it doesn't matter. But especially if you're curious about the Thailand retreat and you kind of want a taste of how the workshops will play out, then be sure to come to this live stream. I'm really excited about it. And again, I am so excited about this retreat. If you have been curious about it, you're on the fence, or maybe you're just hearing about it, definitely click the link in the description to learn more about this very intentionally curated week in Thailand that we will be sharing together. Island hopping, snorkeling, group meditations together, sunrise, sunset meditations, astrology workshops. We're literally going to be together with like-minded people where we can geek out about this stuff while we're literally exploring Thailand. Like I said before, if you are interested in this, there are only three more early bird spots where it's discounted and the ability to have a payment installment plan for further financial accessibility ends in less than a few weeks on March 24th. So if this is something that you want to do, don't hesitate to email me directly. At the bottom of the page that is linked in the description, you can fill out our contact form and it comes to me and I will talk to you about the retreat. So yeah. All right, y'all, if you made it to the end of this video, I would love it if you commented two 
fish emojis, and anything that might have come up for you as you listen to this video, whether it be that you're already feeling some of these astrological themes happening for you now, maybe especially since the sun is already in the sign of Pisces. With all of that said, I will leave you with my favorite quote, and that is, be gentle with yourself because life is about the journey and not the destination. Okay, bye friends.